Every so often I'll get reached out to by, by brands, large brands, small ones, um, and the ones that I'm like interested in and I'll reach back out to and be like, yeah, no, that sounds, that sounds fun. I think it fits. Uh, let's talk about it further. The inevitable question that comes back that makes me laugh every single time is like, what is, what is your content schedule? What are you planning on uploading in like the next few weeks or months? <laughs> Which uh, me, knowing me, having worked with me my entire life is an objectively funny question to even ask. Like, what is your schedule to upload? If any content I have put out has ever seemed calculated, timed perfectly, and uh, like well thought out, obviously I'm, I'm like, I'm shooting way above where my target is. I'm, I'm like shooting for here. If it seems like I'm here, that's pure luck. I don't know what I'm gonna do a week from now. I don't know what I'm gonna do 10 minutes from now. I don't even know what's gonna make it into this video. Like for example, this morning, I started a uh, prototype rack idea out of wood. I like the idea. It's just a smaller form version of a rack that a company in the United States makes. They only sell them through Instagram. It's called Southern Class. It's been sent to me by you guys a ton of times. Thank you for sending it to me. Got the dimensions correct with a piece of wood. And then I went and bought steel. This morning, I wasn't sure if I should go get the steel first or start this vlog because, well, honestly, I knew because if I started talking to a camera, I would eventually venture away from any sort of thought of going to get steel. I also, also Dan has convinced me to go ride this thing again. This thing has the wrong valves in it. That's probably more of a priority than this thing is. That, I just kind of want to ride. I also want to go ride my other bikes today. And the dog needs to be taken out. Not to mention messes. This entire shit, like the whole intro, this is a mess. The whole, this is all a mess. I think I'm gonna work on this. Okay, this is gonna be an exercise in priorities. Dan and I wanna go ride mountain bikes tomorrow. I want my mountain bike to be ready for it. Oh, I also wanted to work on my motorcycle. See, I'm like all over the place. Space, need space. Okay, here we go. Something I've literally been putting off since I think February. I haven't even, I haven't ridden this bike since February. These need to go in there. I think, I think I just quickly want to say this is going, um, this is going incredibly well. And uh, I might be feeling a little stupid for having put it off for so long. Notice how the rim packed one has holes on the side here. These ones only have it here. This gets squished, air can't come out. This one allows for air to escape. It's, uh, it's actually pretty intuitive when you actually look at it. That's easy. That's ready. That was a lot less dramatic than the dramatics that I made it out to be. And that always the way, like, <sighs> brutal. Priority two burn border quality energy. Slow down, it's hot out. Slow down, slow down. It, it's legitimately cold out here. <laughs> you get next to the water, it gets cold. Hey, they fixed all that broken ass asphalt. Looks great. It has been a week minus one day since I did my 225 kilometer Halifax to Tidnish ride. And I'm still feeling it in my legs. Although when I think about it, we did a challenging hike to a waterfall. 
That required a bit of rock climbing skills. That was on Thursday. On Friday, we did like three hours of floating on a river from one bridge to another. And then Angela realized that she didn't bring her key for her car with her. And I ran barefoot on gravel roads for seven-ish, seven-ish kilometers to go get the car that we stopped at to start at. Friday night, my brother and his wife came to visit. We stayed up till 1 a.m. playing Jenga and Dutch Blitz. Saturday morning, my brother and I went and rode the pump track for like an hour, two hours-ish. I edited the Ride to Tidnish vlog. Sunday morning, I rode BMX in the rain alone and then rode BMX again in the afternoon. Monday morning, Carrie and I went and rode BMX in Mount Uniac for like three hours. So yeah, my legs are a little heavy. I don't even think it's the ride that did it. Kind of replaying that all back in my head and admittedly it seems a like a little bit braggy, but there is a point. So, so there's like not a lot, not a lot of comments that like will really get to me, but there's, there's two, maybe three, two main types that actually like, they'll get under my skin. One, when someone comments about the cost or like the quality and cost of something I've built or am riding as a way to try and like bring me down. I think anyone who makes a derogatory comment about someone based on finances is a trash human and you're not worth my time. Uh, two is when a comment pops up that says like, do you even like, do you even ride your bikes? Like, do you even ride? Um, that one, like that one cuts, that one really, that one cuts deep. Because sometimes if I don't like, if I don't make a video about a ride and I don't record any of my rides, I don't put them anywhere, like I'll forget about them. And going through that little exercise of like remembering the last six days and literally having been doing some sort of physical activity every single day, I'm like, oh. Yeah, I definitely did get physically active and rode bikes a lot. And that's like, that is weekly. I am, I am always out. I am always doing something. And it's amazing how easily a comment in the comment section of these videos, it's easy to, uh, it's easy to think that like, maybe I don't ride that often, but it's like any moment that I can find, I kind of am. And it's like, okay, just remember that. Remember that. Not every ride goes on YouTube or Instagram or Strava or Garmin. The worst comments for the receiver are the ones they already believe are true. It's like the same as insults. The insults that hurt the most are the ones you already believe are true. You never want to hear it out loud from someone else's mouth. Was this video easy to follow at all? Because I have a feeling it's gonna be really difficult to edit into something interesting. For those of you whose OCD I was bothering, did you notice? Pretty good, right? 